So we're going to do a quick review. It's not going to be quick. It's going to be long because we're going to try to cram uh, the past three days in, in one period, right? So um, the word form is just the way information is organized, right? So if you go to a dentist, dent, dentist office or a doctor's office, uh, when you fill out the form, it has your first name, your last name, your address, everything's organized. Same thing with equations. If it's in a certain form, the equation is organized in a certain way. Hopefully we remember that slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, okay? And why do we call this form slope intercept form? Uh, because if it's in slope intercept form, if it's organized in this manner, if you have y by itself equals a number x plus or minus another number, if it's organized like that, you'll be able to clearly see the slope and the y intercept, okay? So again, we need to know that this guy is the slope, which is the uh, rise over run. Now we know rise could be positive or it could be negative, but the run is always going to be positive. We're going to choose to look at it from left to right. The B value is the Y intercept. It specifically tells you where your line crosses Y axis. Okay. So that's slope intercept form. So if I tell you there's a line that passes through the y-axis at 5 and it has the slope 2, right, then it would be y equals uh, 2x plus 5. If I told you that it passed the y-axis, it passes through the y-axis at 5 and it has a slope 2, there's your slope-intercept form equation. Now, point-slope form is more fun to memorize at least. Um, point-slope form is almost exactly the same as slope-intercept. Um, it does have y on the left side, but it's not by itself. It doesn't have y by itself and then equals. Right? You have y minus y1. And then you have equals. And just like over here, equals m, we also have equals m. But you have parentheses. And inside those parentheses, you have the x minus x1. So this is just the way we organize the slope intercept form. This is the way we organize the point slope form. Now, why do we call this guy point slope form? Because if you have any point, which is a uh, x1, y1, and if you have any slope, you'll be able to write it in point slope form. Okay. So again, if you have a point and you have a slope, you'll be able to plug in your slope right here and your point right there and right there, okay? I know that that might sound a little uh, confusing right now, but let's actually go through some examples. So a line passes through the slope, or uh, no, a line has the slope two and passes through the location negative three, five. So what am I really giving you here? I am giving you the slope, that's the M value, and I'm also giving you a point. That's a, a point, okay? So what do you think? Are we going to go with slope intercept or point slope? Point slope, it's obvious, right? I give you a point, I give you a slope. Let's go for point slope. Uh, I recommend rewriting the point slope form every time you use it till you memorize it. Y minus Y1 equals M parenthesis X minus X1. You got to memorize it. That's point slope form, okay? Now, how does this work? The point is the x1, y1. So the x1 value, this x1 value goes right here. This y1 value goes over here. And the slope value obviously goes right there. So I recommend writing it and then rewriting it with blank spots. y minus blank spot equals blank spot, parenthesis x minus blank spot. That way it's really easy to plug in your y1, which is 5, right here. That way you could easily plug in your m value of 2 right here. Whoops. And your x1 value of negative 3 right here. Let me do that in red. Apologize. And of course the minus minus changes the plus plus. So it says write an equation of a line that has a slope 2 that passes through that point. Here it is. This is your point slope form equation. Let me write it nicer. Y minus 5 equals 2 parentheses x plus 3. 
So there it is. You guys good? Okay. So let me just uh, move this to the side right here. Now, how about this guy right here? <clears throat> A line crosses the uh, y-axis at three and has the slope negative half. So what am I giving you in this information? I am giving you the m value, and I'm also giving you what? The b value. What is the b value? The b value is the y-intercept. And I'm telling you that the line crosses the y-axis at 3, okay? Um, so that's your b value, okay? So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could actually sketch it. It's kind of pointless to do that, but like, one, two, three. Okay, I know that it crosses the Y right there. That's my B value of three, B equals three. And I know that from that point, I need to go down one over two. So down one over two and put a dot right there. And there's your line, right? That's really ugly. I apologize. Disgusting. But they're not asking us to sketch it. They want us to write an equation. So what am I really giving you here? I'm giving you the slope, which is negative one half, and I'm giving you the B value, which is three. So if I give you the M and the B, what form is the easiest to use? Slope intercept, right? The Y equals MX plus B. Y equals MX plus B. Any questions? No? All right, so... What's the difference between the first one and the second one? On the first one, they gave us a slope and a point. Pretty obvious, go with point-slope form. On the second one, they give you a slope and a y-intercept. Pretty obvious, go with slope-intercept form. So you need to have both forms memorized. You need to have the uh, point-slope form, y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1, and you also need uh, y equals mx plus b. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't even finish this. I'm sorry, I apologize. This m... Let me rewrite it. Y equals MX plus B. Y equals the M value is negative one half. X plus B, that's plus three. So here's your slope intercept form equation. I'm sorry. Whew, it's been a long day. So that was a good question that was just asked right now in class. That what if they gave us this information, but they wanted us to write it in slope intercept form? So regardless of whatever form they ask, you ask yourself, what do they give us? They give us a slope and a point? Go at point slope form. You get this answer, and then if they ask you write in slope intercept, that means that they want it to look like y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b does not have parentheses, so you want to get rid of these parentheses. How? By distributing the 2. So you could distribute the 2. That'll be a 2x. Distribute the 2. That'll be a plus 6. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down the y minus 5. And now it almost looks like y equals mx plus b. You just got to get rid of this minus 5 by subtract or by adding five and adding five then you will have it in y equals mx plus b if they asked for it in y equals mx plus b form so what you guys need to conclude here is whatever information they give you go with the easiest form for you right so if i give you a slope and a y-intercept go with slope intercept form if i give you a slope and a point go with point slope form how about this guy? Do I give you a slope and a y-intercept? No, I don't. I give you a slope and an x-intercept, right? So we do know that the slope is negative 4. Whoops. And that's great because um, slope is either in point-slope form or slope-intercept form. Um, but they don't give us the b-value. So we can't write it in, in y equals mx plus b because this is not a y-intercept. It's the x-intercept. It crosses the x-axis at negative 5. So maybe sketching it will help you out a bit. If it crosses the x-axis at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that means that it's going to cross right there. And what is that location? What is that point? Anybody? Negative 5, comma... Zero. That's right. Now, I mean, you could you could sketch it if you want. If, if, if it has a slope of negative four, it's going to go down four over one. 
And yeah, it's going to look like something really steep like that, but they're not asking us to sketch. They want us to write an equation given this information. Now, we can't do slope intercept form yet, but we could do a point slope because when you sketch it, you'll be able to see the point. That location is negative five zero. So if you go for point slope form, y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. And then I always recommend rewriting it with blank spots. Y minus blank spot equals blank spot parenthesis x minus blank spot. Then you could plug in your m value of negative 4 right there where the m is at. And you could plug in your x1, y1 from the actual point itself. x1 is negative 5, y1 is 0. So y1 is 0, x1 is negative 5. And the only other thing you could do to make this look nicer is change the minus minus to plus plus. And in reality, um, the 0 is not necessary. Okay, so if the question on the quiz says write it in point slope form, this is it. Y minus zero equals negative four parentheses x plus five. You don't need the plus plus. But let's say the instruction said to write it in slope intercept, which is y equals mx plus b. So if you have it in this form and you want it in the other form, get rid of the parentheses. How? By distributing. So go ahead and go negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Bring down the equal sign. You have y minus 0. That's just y. And now we have it in slope-intercept form. Uh, y equals negative 4x minus 20. Sound good? So we need to have both forms memorized and be able to take information and write them in whatever form we want. In addition to that, we also need to know about parallel and perpendicular lines, okay? Parallel lines are going in the same direction. Um, that means they'll never intersect. And if they're going in the same direction, it means they have the same steepness. And if they have the same steepness, that means they have the same slope. So keep in mind that parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. That means that the, the sign of the slope changes and then you flip the fraction, okay? So for example, if you had y equals, let's say negative two thirds x, um, let's say plus four. And if I said, what would the perpendicular slope be? You would have to change that to a positive and flip it. So the perpendicular slope of negative two-thirds would be what? <laughs> three halves, right? Three over two, positive three halves, okay? Anyway, um, we need to know this. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. We need to know it because we're going to have some questions that I ask you, are they parallel, are they perpendicular, or neither, right? Um, down here on this page of notes, we have several examples of parallel lines, but you see the only way you could compare the actual slopes is if it's in y equals mx plus b, where you could see the m right in front of the x, or if it's in point slope form, because point slope form also has the m in front of the parentheses. So they either have to look like this, or like this for you to be able to compare m's so number one it's pretty obvious they're both in slope intercept form the slope is two-thirds the slope is two-thirds that means they're parallel number two you're probably thinking wait a minute these slopes are not the same but the thing is you can't look at slope until you have them in slope intercept form this one is slope intercept form y is by itself this one's not in slope intercept form so before looking at the slope you have to get the y by itself so you could multiply everything by negative one. In other words, change all the signs. And now you could see that the slopes are identical. That one is identical to that one. So yes, they're parallel, right? Number four right there. Are these parallel? Well, this is in point slope form. I could clearly see that my slope is one half. But over here, I can't see my slope yet until I make this y by itself. So you'd have to, 
divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, there's an invisible one. So you really have y equals one half x minus seven, and you could clearly see that one half is the same exact thing, so yes, they are parallel. Cool? So you have to either have it in point slope form or slope intercept form. Slope intercept form, you can see the M. Point slope form, you can see the M. If they're not in these forms, you're not going to be able to look at the M's and compare them. So there will be some questions where I ask you, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? I'm not going to do all of them. Let's just do number two right here. Um, could I see the slope of this yet? Can't see it yet. I need to get Y by itself. So you're going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and that's an invisible negative 1 over negative 3, and divide by negative 3. Now, what we really have here is y equals, now the slope, a negative 1 divided by a negative 3. Can't divide 1 by 3, but a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you really have the slope, 1 third x. And who cares about the b value? You could just put plus 8 over 3. Okay? But at least now we could see the slope, 1 third. And this one's in point slope form. I could already see the 1 third. So what could we conclude? that they're parallel because parallel lines have the same slope. Now, if this slope over here would have been a negative three, then it would have been perpendicular. Why? Because if this one's positive and this one would have been a negative three, if you change it and flip it, it gives you a negative three, that'd be perpendicular. Or it could be neither, right? Should we do another one of these or just move on? Move on, sounds good, okay. Um, so parallel and perpendicular lines indirectly um, give you your slope, okay? So right here, I tell you, write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line that passes through 4, 2, and is perpendicular to this guy. So whenever you see the word parallel or perpendicular, I'm indirectly giving you the slope, okay? Is our slope going to be identical to this one? No. No. If it would say parallel, yeah, it'd be the same identical slope because parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular have opposite reciprocal slopes. So you have to change the sign and flip the fraction. What fraction? Just put it over one. Now it's a fraction. So what is our slope going to be? Our slope is going to be a positive one half. You change it, you flip it. So our slope is positive one half. And in addition to that, I tell you that it passes through this point right here. That's an X and a Y. So obviously, if I give you a slope and a point, you could go with point slope form. Point slope form is y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. And whenever you use point slope form, I recommend writing it down and then rewriting it with blank spots. y minus blank spot equals blank spot parenthesis x minus blank spot. Your y2 happens to be 2. So you put a 2 right there. Your m value happens to be 1 half. Put a 1 half right there. And your uh, x1 value is 4. Put that right there. If the question said write an equation in uh, point slope form, this would be it. You wouldn't have to do anything. But it does ask for specifically slope intercept. So we need to change this to y equals mx plus b. Obviously, y equals mx plus b doesn't have parentheses, so you're going to have to distribute the fraction. A lot of people freak out, but it's really easy. One half times x is exactly one half x. One half times negative four, if you don't know that half of four is two, you could put the four over a one and then multiply the top with the top, okay? One times four is four, and the bottom with the bottom. Two times one is two, and of course, a positive times a negative will still be a negative. You still have the equals. You have y minus 2. And, of course, now you could reduce this fraction. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So you would have y minus 2 equals 1 half x minus 2. And then you'd go plus 2 plus 2, and you'd get your slope-intercept form equation y equals 1 half x uh, plus 0, which is just y equals 1 half x. Sorry, I ran out of space right there. <clears throat> you know what? Let's jump to this worksheet. This is a good worksheet. A lot of great questions here. 
So it all depends on what information I give you. That way you know whether you go with a point slope form or slope intercept form. Which one would you like to see on this, uh, on this first, first side of the worksheet? So number one, what do they give you? They give you the slope and they give you the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the b value. So they're telling you that your b value is zero. So if you know your slope and you know your y-intercept, which form are you going to use? Slope intercept or point slope? Slope intercept. If they give you the slope and they give you the intercept, go with slope intercept. Slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Right? So just plug it in. y equals the m is 2 with an x uh, plus the b value is 0. So there it is. That's your answer. y equals 2x plus 0. You don't even need the plus zero if you don't want. You could just put y equals 2x. But anyways, the idea here is you take the information that they give you and you go with the form that's best with that information. So if I give you a slope and a y-intercept, go with slope-intercept form. If I give you a point and a slope, then you go with point-slope. Which other one would you like to see? So, four or five? Okay. Um, let's go five, then we'll go back to four. So right here, whenever you see the words parallel or perpendicular, I'm indirectly giving you the slope of the line, of your line, okay? So what does perpendicular mean? Does it have the same identical slope? No. Perpendicular means that you have the uh, opposite reciprocal. So what is our slope if it's going to be the opposite reciprocal of negative one half? Yep, positive two over one or just positive two. So indirectly, I gave you a slope, and I directly gave you a point, x1, y1. So if you have a point and you have a slope, what are you going to use? Point slope form. y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. I always recommend writing it down and then rewriting it with blank spots. That way you don't make mistakes when you plug in your values. Plug in the y value of 3 right there. Plug in the x value of 2 right there. Plug in the m value of 2 right there. And that is your point slope form. If they ask for it in point slope form, you write that down, you're done. But if they want it in slope intercept form, which would be y equals mx plus b without parentheses, you'd have to get rid of those parentheses by distributing. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Bring down the equal sign, the y, the minus 3. y is almost by itself. Just go plus 3 here, plus 3 there. And you will have y equals 2x minus 1. And now you have it in slope-intercept form. So if they ask for point-slope form, point-slope, you would leave it like that. If they ask for slope-intercept, you would leave it like that. Yes. Let's jump back one to number four. What do they give us here? Anytime you see parallel or perpendicular, they're giving you the slope. Okay, so our slope has to be parallel to the slope of this equation. What is the slope of this equation? Negative three. So our slope has to be identical to negative three. Why? Because it's parallel. If it were perpendicular, you do the opposite reciprocal, but it's parallel, it's identical. Okay, what else do they give us? Do they give us a B value, the Y-intercept? No. They give us the X-intercept. Now, what the heck is an X-intercept? That's just where it crosses the X-axis. Where does it cross the X-axis? It crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So we know that our line crosses right here at that location. Indirectly, I'm giving you a point. What is that point? What is that location? Four comma zero. That's exactly right. Now, yes, you could sketch it and be like, oh, from this point, I'm going to drop three and run one. So you could go drop three, run one, and you get a sketch of your line that's like pretty steep going down like that. But they're not asking us to sketch. They want us to write an equation. And the bottom line here is they're giving us the slope indirectly because of the word parallel. It's exactly the same as this guy. And they're giving us a point, x, y. So we're going to go with point slope form. y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. y1, m minus x1. 
And I always say rewrite it with blank spots. Y minus blank spot equals blank spot parenthesis X minus blank spot. Plug in your Y1, which happens to be zero. Uh, plug in your X1, which happens to be four, <clears throat> be four right there. And plug in your M, which happens to be negative three right there. So if they ask for point slope form, this is it. If they ask for point slope, this would be it. But the instructions say rewrite it in slope intercept. So you don't want the parentheses. So you would distribute negative three times X, negative three X, negative three times negative four is positive 12. Bring down the equal sign. You have Y by itself because Y take away zero is Y after all. And now it's in slope intercept form. So in this particular homework, uh, they're asking for slope intercept. That's what you would use. So get the Y by itself. That's what, that's what you would submit as a final answer. Any question on the backside? Any question on the backside? Or are we good? 18. Okay, 18. It says it passes through the point, negative 8, negative 7, and is perpendicular. So indirectly, I'm giving you the slope. Is your slope going to be identical to that one? What is our slope going to be? Negative 1 over 4. That's exactly right. Our slope is negative 1 fourth. Again, a perpendicular slope, you would have to change the sign to a negative, and you'd have to flip the fraction. You're like, what fraction? Well, if you put it over a 1, now it looks like a fraction. So you change to a negative and flip it, it becomes negative 1 fourth. So our slope is negative 1 fourth. And they also give us a point. The point is uh, x, y, negative 8, negative 7. So let's plug it on the point slope form. And I recommend writing it down each time until you memorize it. And even after you memorize it, when you plug in the values, write it with blank spots. Y minus blank spot equals parenthesis, I mean equals uh, blank spot parenthesis x minus blank spot. Plug in your y1 value, which is negative 7. Plug in your m value, which is negative 1 fourth. And plug in your uh, x1 value, which is negative 8. The minus minuses change the plus plus. So what we have here is y plus 7 equals negative 1 fourth times x plus 8. And if they ask for point slope form, this would be your answer. But they want us to change the slope intercept. So we're going to have to get rid of the parentheses by distributing. And then we're going to get rid of the plus 7 by subtracting. Let's distribute first. So negative 1 fourth times x, that's negative 1 fourth x. That's easy. Negative 1 fourth times 8. If you're confused, put the 8 over a 1. Then multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. 1 times 8 is 8 up on top. And 4 times 1 is 4 on the bottom. And of course, a negative times a positive will be a negative. So, so far, we have y plus 7 equals negative 1 fourth x minus 8 fourths. But this fraction, 8 fourths, we could actually do 8 fourths. What is 8 divided by 4? 2. So we really have y plus 7 equals negative 1 fourth x minus 2. And to get the y by itself, we add or subtract 7 right here on our last step. And we'll have y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 9. And there is your slope intercept form equation. If they would have said point slope form, you would stop right here. That would be your point slope form. But since they asked for slope intercept, you take it down to y by itself. Check it out. There's this one type of question that we should go over. Write an equation of the line that passes through those two points. Okay? And let's even be more specific here. We could say write an equation in slope intercept form. In slope intercept form. That means you want it organized y equals mx plus b. What's the only thing you could do when you have two points? Anybody remember that from last week? Yeah, the, the slope, the slope formula. Hopefully you remember that the slope formula is m equals, uh, it's a fraction, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And since you have an x and a y, an x and a y, label this one your first point, label this one your second point. And now you could easily plug it in with blank spots. Whenever I plug in, I plug it in with blank spots. That way you don't make mistakes. 
So y2 is 6, y1 is negative 6, x2 is 4, x1 is negative 2. The minus minuses change the plus plus. So up on top, we'll get 12. On the bottom, we get 6. And of course, uh, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So we have found the slope. That's the only thing you could do with two points besides graphing them to find the slope using the slope formula. Now that you have the slope and some points, what form would be good to write it in? Now that we have a slope and some points, point slope form, right? So if you have a point and a slope, go for point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M parenthesis X minus X1. So rewrite it with blank spots and plug in your Y1 value. Your Y1 value is up here, negative six. So you're gonna plug in a negative six right there. Your M value we found out was two using the slope formula. We got two, so plug in a two for the M. And your X1 value is negative two. Plug in negative two right there. And all you have to do is change the minus minus the plus plus. So you have Y plus six equals two parentheses X plus two. If they ask for slope or for point slope form, this would be your answer. But if you want to change the slope intercept, you distribute two times X, that's two X, two times two, that's four. Bring down the equals, bring down the Y, the plus six. Get rid of the six by subtracting six and subtracting six. So your answer, your equation will be Y equals two X minus two. That's y equals mx plus b. So if they would have asked for the equation of the line that passes through these two points in point slope form, you would stop right here at y plus 6 times 2 or equals 2 times x plus 2. But since they asked for or since I made it, find it in slope intercept, you want to get y by itself. On this question, you need some points. So let's find some points. There's a nice point. This, this one right here, that's the location 3, 6. And here's another nice point. That's the location 4, 1. Okay. Um, we want to write it in slope intercept form. And we could count the slope from one point to the other. It's down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's negative 5 over 1. So the slope is negative 5 over 1, which is just negative 5. So we know the slope. Uh, we don't see the y-intercept, so we can't write it in slope-intercept form yet. We know it's going to cross somewhere up here. Um, but we do have some points. So we're going to go with point-slope form. I want to use this first point, 3, 6, and the slope, uh, negative 5, to write it in point-slope form. So there's our point-slope form equation. We're going to rewrite it with blank spots. So we could easily plug in our y1 value. In this case, y1 is 6. Plug in 6 right there. Your m value is negative 5. And your x1 value is 3. And that's your point slope form equation, but they're asking for it in slope intercept. So let's get rid of the parentheses by distributing the negative 5 and rewriting y minus 6 and then getting rid of the minus 6 by doing plus 6 and plus 6. So we'll have y equals negative 5x plus 21. There's your slope intercept form equation. It crosses the y axis at 21 way off this graph. I apologize for that long lesson. Hopefully it helps you. Um, if you haven't gotten 100% on the practice quiz, hopefully now you have the skills to get 100% on that practice quiz. And we're going to have a short quiz tomorrow. Okay.